Here at the Dub Network and Suds with Bloods, we'd like to thank our partner, Early Bird. Early Bird gummies are a recreational hemp product which has 2.5 milligrams of natural THC and 12.5 milligrams of CBD. Great for taking the edge off after a hard day. For me personally, I don't sleep well. It helps me get a great night's sleep, six to eight hours. It's a great way to relax. And if you use the word suds, you'll get 20% off your first order. And hey, this is part two, in case you missed the episode with the Belfour family last week. Here's part two. Hope you enjoy it. Well, this is that. not a TV show. <laughs> um, the, the whole <laughs> corona thing that happened, did that put a big dent in what you guys are trying to do as far as... Oh, for sure. Yeah, it did? We had, yeah. to, we had to shift because... We launched in October of 19. Yeah, October 2019, oh. we launched... Right um, before the storm. Show. And then yeah. March 2020, obviously, the world <laughs> shut down. So in the beginning, we really wanted our focus to be heavily bars and restaurants and, and create awareness by having, you know, products on shelves on the shelf, everywhere. Yeah. And obviously with, you know, everything shutting down, the bar restaurant industry just got, That's you know, hammered. Guy, yeah, and right? so we... What's um, got? Pecan. Oh, yeah. I haven't drank it Every, All the people so here luckily, right now, all they hear right now is this... Yeah. It's your dad and your brother. Sorry. Yeah, you guys settle down over there. Sorry. So, uh, luckily, uh, liquor stores were deemed... Our new small batch rye. <laughs> small batch straight rye right there, yep. It's beautiful. So we need more people to tune in to this show. Our, um, luckily, liquor stores were deemed essential. So, because everyone needed to Ooh. keep their, you know, their mental... Isn't that, isn't that kind of ironic? Yeah. yeah, so liquor stores were deemed essential. I'll and that, that was really our saving grace. So, we completely refocused from bar restaurant to the retail sector. So we have a lot more presence in liquor stores right now than we do in bars and restaurants. Yeah. So in the last year, we've really been fo refocusing, trying to get our you know name and presence more out there. Back right. on premise, yeah. And, and yeah. being in Texas, that's again, not easy being a four tier yeah. system. The bars and restaurants have to order from your class B wholesalers and we have to find that out to support them, to help sales for yeah. So, you, so I mean, it's a big relationship industry. Kind of where it's, we started, uh, or you were going to start, and let alone, because you shifted gears <laughs> from that, yeah. right? So shifted what, gears a few times. <laughs> and I don't mean this to be the end of this thing, but there isn't, is there an end goal to this, to have a your own mm -hmm. boutique, motel, you know, how far do you go? And so, you get into other liquors. Will you so ever that was get the into idea. something else? Let alone was, was what we thought was going to be our, our distillery, and a um, little music venue in where we would produce all of our different spirits. And, and we do have goals to do other spirits, but we're focused heavily on our bourbon and rye whiskey right now um, because we don't have our own distillery. But um, there's a lot of laws and regulations, and, and every city has their own set of laws and regulations. And that was a whole learning curve that we had to figure out and then dealing with TABC, um, you know, the regulators, it just took forever to get straight answers. Did no, you take did you take a step and then find out there was a law and then you had to, oh yeah. to take two steps backwards? Plenty and, of times. Yeah, yeah, several times. Yeah. yeah. And but then we we, we would hire problems. lawyers to help us yeah. and they couldn't even give us the right answers. So we did a lot of, you know, just spinning our wheels and, and trying to figure stuff out. So, you know, finally we're just like, you know what, let's just march forward and, and then try and make it happen. And then you run into roadblocks. And then you're like, okay, you can't do that. So we go back to the beginning. So Perseverance, had, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Never in, give up. In our career, all of our careers here. Yeah, never give up. And, and you just, you find a way. You find a way to win. We always found a way to win. Yeah. And that's what you do. You just keep moving forward. There's going to be bumps in the road. You just know it. You're gonna have some issues and, and you learn from them and you just keep going and you keep getting better. Our whiskey keeps getting better. Packaging keeps getting better. Um, you know, we understand the processes so much better now. Um, so Do you worry about the, I know there's tons of competition. Yeah. Do you worry about it? Do you try to find things that separate you or do you just say, We're, this is our lane? This is our lane. You know, we stay focused on, on quality, okay? Um, when we first got into this business, we had consultants that told us, 
yeah, you know, you guys should just buy a really cheap bottle, you know, buy a cheap label, buy cheap whiskey, well, and and, and put your name on it and just put it out there. I taste it more. And, and it's like both all of us looked at each other and were like, if we're going to put our family that, name yeah, on not something. Not especially not the Belfour name. Yeah, right. Not, we're, yeah, we're going, you know, total ultra premium quality. Like we're not going to cheap out on anything. Like we told the consultants, we're not doing that. Like, there's no way we're well, going to... Well, they basically wanted him to just license his name, just like every other celebrity brand that's out there. And we're like, well, if we're putting our family name on something, yeah. this is going to be sure the work that we create. Yeah. And so Dad and Dane both went to do two different distilling schools. So they went to Moonshine University, is literally what it's called. Where Moonshine University in Kentucky. Louis, okay. yeah. And um, they also went to the Canadian Craft Distilling Institute in Kelowna, B.C., so that was before Dane did his internship, um, before, right? Yeah. yeah. It was all, before yeah. you did your internship at Woody Creek in Colorado. Oh, and cool. then, um, so when they were at Moonshine University, tons of connections throughout the industry, you know, is how you guys got connected with a lot of people through that place. And so um, something that differentiates us is majority of the brands that you see out there, they're just sourcing their barrels and then packaging it. So they're not actually distilling, creating their research development, doing, you know, the processes behind Which that. Which is that what you guys started doing, sourcing no. it? No, we right never from sourced. day one? We never okay. sourced. Okay. Yeah. So, we, so we that's something that. that's very, very unique. Majority of new brands source to start. So we wanted it to be ground up ours. So what we do do that people, I think that kind of confuses people is currently we're distilling in North Carolina because mm -hmm. we have a partner situation out there. So when they were at Moonshine University... There was um, a husband-wife duo. I laugh at that. Yeah. There was a husband-wife duo that was building their facility right when we were conceptualizing our brand. So it was kind of a perfect match to begin with because they needed customers. They needed clients to make, they okay. contract to still for people, and we needed a facility. So rather than building the facility first, which takes, you know, however long and millions of dollars, we're like, well, let's focus on the yeah. brand first, create a partnership with them until we can then build our own facility. So that's what, exactly what we did. We were their first client. And so... Um, Everything that we've made, other than the 12 barrels that Dane made in Colorado for this, yeah. um, everything else we've distilled in North Carolina at Southern Distilling with Pete and Vienna Barger. So we're really grateful to have that partnership. Mm -hmm. um, but now they've grown immensely. We've grown immensely. We need to get our own facility, have everything. And also, too, like we have 2,000, a little less, in, uh, I guess it's less than I got to do some math. We got 2, 000, about 2,000 barrels that are aging right now in North Carolina. Yeah. And how long is that going to be? Like when you talk about aging, how many years? It just that? depends on the product, and it depends on the both the um, distillate that you put in the barrel and then the type of barrel. So we actually that's something that we that Dad through his mad scientist, you know, you know how he is. So um, when he was doing all of his when he's into something, he's into right. something. he's into something. So when sure. he was doing all of his like barrel profile research. He actually figured out a way that you can speed up the aging of whiskey and then also to make it taste good at a younger age. And so that's one of my biggest frustrations in this industry is people just, like you said, not age. being educated about it. Yes. So everyone thinks older equals better. No. Not necessarily. I've tasted you some. You over oak something. I've tasted <laughs> some stuff that tastes like dog shit <laughs> that was, you know, 13 years old, whatever. And so if you're if you're putting shit in, you're gonna get shit out. Uh -huh. So first Very of well all, said, the the ingredients, the That's grain. That's a good name for a bottle. <laughs> so yeah, the, and you'll sell it for nine ninety nine. Yeah. So <laughs> the ingredients, the, where you're sourcing your grain, your corn. You know, we use non GMO. Like everything is good quality ingredients. The fermentation process, the yeast strains that you use, then the barrels that you're selecting, where the wood comes from, how long the wood aired like air aged in open stage. air yeah. so like some you know cooperages they might air wood for six months 12 months 18 months 24 months all of that's months. adding to the cost of your barrel Absolutely. do you guys but it's burn adding to do the you premium. burn wood on your own just to see oh. just to test it or do you have the, the <laughs> so dad visited deal. pretty like you know we've used like eight different cooperages so yeah, like dad that. visited all the cooperages you know saw their operations learned about their processes yeah. there's there's you know there's water bending there's fire bending there's like all different you're like like airbender yeah, Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, as soon as I said it, I was like, I sound like I'm talking about yeah. that cartoon. What's up? Um, but so, but there's so <laughs> many things that go into this, and that's why it's frustrating when people complain about the cost of bourbon and rye. And I'm like, you have no idea. Oh yeah. How many things go into right. creating that class oh. of whiskey? It takes 80 years to grow an oak tree before you can cut it down and make it into barrels. 
<laughs> so that's a hundred years of history in that glass right there. Right. That's what people don't realize. You know, the tree has to grow. Everything grow has to on mature. the right side of the mountain or hill. The um, climate. The where, the climate where located. The the further north you go, the tighter the growth rings are on the yeah. the yeah. oak. Yeah. The tighter the growth rings are, the more of those vanillas, those caramels you're going to get in your whiskey. It'll so we try and focus. Or in the south, the, the the rings are further apart. So. It's just everything that goes into it is just so meticulous, so detail-oriented. And so that's why when someone told us, just slap your name on a bottle and do it for cheap and just, you know, turn it around and sell it, we're like, absolutely mm -hmm. not. That's just, just not who we the are. Yeah. Then like, you got, you got I have Cooper a memory just... of dad growing up when we were in Toronto where all of his old goalie pads were in the basement, and he was ripping them apart. And I was like, Dad, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm trying to learn what's inside this thing so I can create a better pad. And then, you know, off he didn't yeah. let anyone sharpen his skates. You know, or, like he, or move his helmet or his yeah, or pads. Touch. Don't even look at me. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, story no, his, that you guys told about the screw that something fell off. Oh, that was, was Luco. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, what's this? <laughs> oh, okay, Edward Scissorhands undresses his entire, his entire equipment. <laughs> so that's the thing is like that intensity that he had in the game of hockey just translated to a new industry. And he's a bit stubborn. That's oh, why no. I'm wondering how you get, well, let me tell you one stubborn, <laughs> let me tell you a stubborn story. So <clears throat> it was, I don't know if it was a morning skate or it was just a practice day. And you know, the warm up drills that we got to do and we line up, we're doing this drill. And I think there was one time down and one time back. And I'm like normal, I'm not paying attention to everything. And I, and I hear Hitch yelling at me. Like I was the, the guy, like yeah. got to go, go into the office, whatever. And I skate over <laughs> Called the Called into hitch. the principal. Well, it was more kind of relaying days. messages. You know yeah. what I mean? He knew. So he goes, what the fuck is Belfour doing? I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, look at him. And so I don't, I'm not paying attention. You, you were down at the other end of the rink. <laughs> just and look I, and at I, him. And I'm, I'm looking at Hitch. And he goes, well, just look at him. And I look down there, and I look down to where Eddie's in the net. But he's not in the net. He's over in the corner stretching. we just done the first shooting drill. And so I said, I don't know. He goes, go find out. So now you can imagine, 23 guys there. are all stopped. <laughs> and here's Ludwig, he skates all the way down to the other end. I bend over, Eddie, what's up? He goes, nothing. I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, I'm not doing that drill. I said, what? He goes, this drill sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it was his yeah. warm up drill and he's very stubborn in particular, right? Yeah. So I'd skate all the way down to the other end of the ring. Hitch, he's not doing this drill. Will you fucking go tell him he's going to do this? <laughs> I skate all the way back down to the other end. I said, Eddie, I'm not going in the net. And so I skate all the way back down to Hitch, and now the guys are laughing. And every time you start skating, you hear the little <laughs> the, the stick tapping. There goes Ludwig again. <clears throat> and I said, Hitch, he just won us six games in a row. We're okay changing a, a warm-up drill for him. Well, what the fuck does he want? I said, I don't know. Go find out. <laughs> Go back down. I, I should have never said that. <clears throat> and, he, and then I think his comment was anything but this. So I skate all the way down. And then ultimately, Hitch, you know, decides, you know, and you guys kind of had a love hate relationship, or maybe did it end on hate? Did it end on love? But no, it's just yeah. intense. <clears throat> it, yeah, and I think you both are kind the of. Only, like the only that. time it turned a, a, a little awkward is when he decided not to play me. Well, I think that's that way with every coach. That's a that pretty big wanted. problem. But was. you wanted to play 75, 78 games a year, didn't you? Uh, well, I, 60 was a good number. Yeah. But it was at a, a transitional time in the in the organization, which I think was difficult on, on everybody. So yeah, gotcha. That's, anyway. that's when that whole thing... That's where I get with stubborn. And I wonder how do you guys... Well, Lutz, that's why I'm it, your you, So have you, you know, actually... So you let's get at, back to the drill. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember the drill. You do? Yeah, it was a. You remember this whole thing? Oh yeah, I remember the whole thing. But I never did. You know, it. you made me look. Like I never a fool. did. I never did any kind of drills that created bad habits. If it, well, if it, if it, if it that's was another a, thing I want to talk about. Like, and stop, stop with the bad habit thing. And I want to know why he's like this. And I talked to our goalies. You want to ask I, us why he's a certain way? No, I want to bring <laughs> up. I want to bring up his attention to detail. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Is. And I didn't notice this in the beginning. And then I watch how he does, anytime he catches a puck, that, and then he puts his hand down. And, and you hold it for an annoying amount of time, which seems like, but it's about the details of covering up a puck. Yeah. And I would tell our goalies all the time. And, and protecting it. And protecting it. And protecting yeah, it. Yeah, okay, all that, of that stuff. That, that blocker 
you know, that's your uh, your, that's your, your shield. We your know shield. what you did with the blocker. Yeah. I'm talking about the catching hand. Yeah, you, well, you, you would always you catch, it, but then the blocker. You got to come up. Because remember, they're going to try and chop your hand, <clears throat> right? Or poke underneath. Not today, any. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. They don't mm. do shit yeah, anymore. But anyway, really. you know what I'm talking about. But that attention to detail. Yeah. Does it kind of get sometimes, Dad? My God. Oh, for sure. It, <laughs> well, for sure. I'd say more so with me than Dane. Um, just because, so when you were talking about him and... I'm usually not listening yeah. to anyone. So uh, that would be me and him. So I am kind of a carbon copy of dad. Kind so, of? <laughs> kind of? Like Dane played hockey and Dane looks like dad. I mean, when he had less of this. Yeah. But, you know, and when and when dad had the hair more like this. So... Oh, well, that's another... Yeah, I wish I could still one. grow it like that. Yeah. What what uh, U18 team did you play for? Did you play for a team out of Michigan? No, I I was with uh, Team USA at 17 to go overseas. No, did you play with a, another team out of Michigan somewhere? Uh, Victory Honda that, at 16, Okay, Victory Honda. 17. We're playing. Yeah, that was when you had Tink as your goalie, and yes. I played you guys. I remember that was down So here. we come into the building, and I didn't know that you were playing, right? And so we come into the building. I didn't know you were playing at that level yet, to be yeah. honest with you. So I walk into the building, and the, the rink that we walked into, we were up after, obviously, after your game. And I look at the coach I'm with, I'm like, look at this kid out here. Because all I can see is from the back. And you guys didn't have names on your jerseys. Yeah. I said, look at this kid from the back. I said, look at that. And they're like, yeah. I said, that's an Eddie Belfour clone right there. You had the hair, the, thing, <laughs> the same identical thing. Oh, like, everything oh. was exactly the same. And I'm like, and that I walk over like into a... the corner and I'm looking at him. I'm like, this is like a clone <laughs> of Belfour. Who's that guy? Out and then there? when the game was over, I went and talked to the coach and I just said, hey, who, who's your goalie? Well, you should know. I'm like, what do you mean I should know? Well, Dane. I said, Dane who? He goes, Dane Belfort. I said, no way. So when you talk about the hair out the back yeah. and everything else, I mean, it was it was uncanny mm -hmm. what that is. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So while Dane might have the hockey side to him and the, the you know the playing and the look to it, uh, personality wise, we are much more the same. I think okay. I'm a lot so, like my mom. Like, so sometimes socially. Yeah. Right. So sometimes that works wonders because if we're on the same page, we're like, no one can stop us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really but funny to watch if for me. We're... Well, who's the first one that has to take a step back then? Well, you do? No, Eddie? I think he does. That's bullshit. There, there, <laughs> there, 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 there is no. Mm, I said earlier, your boss ass bitch rig, and it's hilarious when you're pissed mm. off. It, it's funny. Questionable. Reagan, you've always gotten your way. I, oh, ever what? since ever, yeah. I, with, with I, me, ever since you were that that big. This you, is where we become Jerry Springer, right? Oh now. my God. So, oh, speaking of Jerry Springer, don't you? Who's who, Jake's out there working, right? Yeah. Why did he ask me yesterday? What's your favorite drink? And I told him an old fashioned. How come he's not bringing them in here? Oh. I said, well, that's, you know, well, that's a great question. He might be out there making it. <laughs> okay, he might be well, right now. We don't now, have a I think full bar hear. in here. We have ice and, and all. What he, don't he, you have? He, I don't know. Hey. He's probably out there we right now. We do have now. a fridge with ice Went in it, down, by the way. Well, yeah. Down to the but store. But it's not going to fit he's in buying this little thimble. <laughs> he's, he's buying all butlers. the... Yeah. <laughs> he's down, going down the street. Okay, so... The ingredients Anyway, for so the... when you're butting heads... Yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, I Or do like... you butt heads anymore? Oh, we do. Yeah. Yes, yes. every How day. How could you not? Hey, <laughs> did we butt day. heads on our team? All of us yeah, did, every once in a while. You and I had a video session one time. I don't, you probably don't remember this because I I'm sure you, he put it out of his memory. Is this when he got back from Austin? <laughs> no, there was a game and Daryl Sador. There was a goal that was scored on you from just inside center ice. Is that and the one they used uh, on the uh, the that, league the league the all star <laughs> thing? Wasn't that? <laughs> I have no idea. The the league gambling videos. Ninety three, ninety four. Here, here's examples of athletes that we think may have been. You oh, know, come on. Side betting. Yeah, the, well, it was that shot over. from the other end of the ice. <laughs> was that your first year And I'm with like, us? guys, it, it, it hit Sid or whoever it was up there right. by the blue line. Yes. Because I went to go like this and it went, went yes. in the top corner over here. <laughs> okay, but so, so what year oh, was God. that? Was that your first year oh, here, maybe? It could have been. <clears throat> because I remember, because it was the comment in the paper that you, you were talking to, the, the odd time you talked to a reporter, and his line was something like, well, I don't know how I'm going to stop these things with these guys blocking all these shots, which he was 100% right. At the time, we were blocking too many, wrong time, all that kind of stuff. Andy was the same way, uh, and we always have to yeah. learn with goalies. You know, sometimes you got to stay away. But it was that that comment. I got it. I'm like, what the fuck? So we went into the video room, and I think I said something to you like, 
So what are you making now, like $5 million? And I said, so about 112 feet away, you can't stop that puck right there? And there was a camera behind the, behind you. And I'm like, yeah, it did change. It changed about this much or so. And it was more about throwing us under the bus at the time, but not really. But it, anyway, so <laughs> th- th- there's the my way or the highway kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So he's the one that gives in? No. That still has a lot of my way or the highway. We're both my way or the highway. And <laughs> Do you have to get in the middle of it? Like I said, there's it gets to a or certain you just have point another drink. where I just that you damn right I open up another Miller High Life. And, <laughs> yeah. So and I, Dane, I just, you know, Dane is a very uh, he's more like I'm going to remove myself. I don't want to be confrontational. We're like we will just blow up and then move on. Yep. You know, we're both like we'd rather just deal with it right now mm-hmm. and then not stew on this. You know. Yeah. So we're we're it's good because we both handle conflict. I'd say the same way. But um, whereas Dane is a little bit more like, you know, I'm going to remove myself from this and then I'm come back. Go yeah. sit over here um, and think for a minute or two. Yeah, yeah. let things cool down. Let's yeah. Let the dust settle a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but I mean, it happens. Where it's family, and then you add business into it. You add it's two personalities easy. like this. We're and, passionate. Life's, yeah, life's not we're easy. That's shit. a polite way of saying that. Well, we're no, very, that's a true way. We're very passionate, true. just like when we play when the you game. Play. That's it. All co- it, to me, it always come, goes full circle back yeah. to when we started. I mean, hey. you just carry the same traits into this business. Exactly. Yeah. We're we're all on the same team. Everyone, yeah. cares. you know, just just like the the years of our career in the locker room. There's all always like a little bit of you know. Yeah, yeah. Stuff but, going but, on. but it's all it's supposed to be constructive. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's we're always to be pulling on the rope. Together. Yeah, the same way. Yeah. Yeah, the same way. So going back to the little Elm thing, what what is the end goal? Uh, so your ultimate thing is you guys are gonna have where you're doing everything out of yeah. it. Yeah. Next year we should be open. And what the, what is it gonna look like? With the finished product, what's all there? Well, we'll have our stills there, producing all of our own whiskey. And how many does it go by how many barrels you a, a day, a month, a There's year. Different sizes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, different sizes of stills. So the one that we're putting in will do approximately ten thousand barrels a year, which oh, is yeah. a lot. That's a lot of booze, lads. Like that can get it done. Ten thousand barrels. Okay, so what? Is, what so what's like the four, biggest? Like, so there's about like thirty-five cases that will come out of a barrel. Okay. And then there's six of these per case. So Depending how many proof point and age? Lads. What What's the biggest company? Well, like you have, oh. like you don't. Oh, Jim you know Beam. You look Jim up to Tree Check and and guys like that. Is there a company that you look up to? Say we want to be Heaven like Hill. them. Heaven Hill's done a great job over the years, and Wilderness Trail just lately. Uh, Dr. Dr. Pat, Dr. Pat and Shane, yeah, uh, good guys. They've done an awesome job. They they do sweet mash just like we do. Um, I think they they're probably the the best right now of of the up they're, and comers. They make unbelievable juice. And so, how many but, barrels is a company like that do? When you said, so what did you say, 10, they're probably doing. Well, fifty thousand. Wilderness has the has the big Kahuna. Yeah, they have a thirty six inch column and they have an eighteen, so they can do probably fifty thousand barrels a year or maybe sixty. But Jim Beam is doing like five gallons per minute of White Lightning, and they're, they're just doing, putting in another column too. Yeah, they're so, doing like they fifteen hundred barrels a day. This is that whole economic barrel, thing. They can fill a barrel a minute. They fill fifty five. They produce 55 gallons per minute of white lightning, which is moonshine or new what, make. What goes into the barrel. So and the barrel is 53 gallons. Yeah, the industry yeah. standard barrel is 53 gallons. So they are excessively overfilling a barrel every 60 seconds. So when I try to explain to a consumer or a drinker the, the level of quality and, and, and how price point is completely relative to the economics behind it, Look at what Dad and I and Reagan are doing. We're producing 10,000 barrels a year maxed out. When I'm talking about we're running 25.8, that is 20. Well, we're not even okay. there yet. When, so. when we get there. But yeah. thank you, Reagan. You're working overtime by saying 25.8. So, exactly. Is, is that what I'm supposed to take out of that? Yes, but those was guys. I before. I thought it was 24. But, Lutz, do, do you think that those guys are going to be worried about purchasing 36 month old air season staves to give you a better product at a younger age? No, it's a completely different business model. They're always going to be worried about quality control, but their business model just takes a little bit longer time to age back to that point that is older actually better. Well, that is such a loaded question. And yes and no. It, it, it's completely contingent on, on your steps up to getting to that point when you put it in the barrel. Did you spend the extra money on barrels? Our barrels cost $250 per barrel. Some are over. Well, now it's like over three hundred. So, so <laughs> those guys aren't worried about air season stays. Here's the business mind. I over think here. here's um, the dollar and cents. Yeah. <laughs> I think Four Roses has done a really good job, and so is Willet. They're they're from the old school days, 
I think they've done a nice job of focusing on some quality products too. And don't get it twisted. I am not knocking Jim Beam because I love what Beam well, does. Well, it's just an entirely and different level. It's just a different business. Bis yes, thank you, Regan. Different, exactly. Different price point. Yeah. Different you know, they're, model. They're, they're focused on the masses, you know, like they're, they're a quality product, but they're focused on mass distribution. Yeah. You know, we're focused on having, you know, small, we're still smaller distribution, but having that ultra, ultra premium quality product. So that's kind of where earlier you guys had said uh, tequilas or whatever, I don't know, you mentioned other liquors, and you say you're focused on this. How long would it be? I mean, are you going to conquer this, or can you dabble, start dabbling in another? Well, once we'll start we have our own the, distillery. Because distillery, you can sell on premise in the distillery. Yeah. So. So we'll, once we we'll, start making our own juice, yes, Luds, we could absolutely experiment with some other spirits. And what's wonderful about it is we have bourbon and rye setting in front of us here, and they are in completely different profiles of barrels to give you this type of maturity. Now, each one has a different mash bill that gives it its profile that's housed in the barrel. So over time, if this juice has been sitting in the barrel for five, six years, you dump it to create a new batch, you still got a barrel left over sitting there, a, a, a vat, a vessel, something you can refill it with. Well, just to be clear, so bourbon and rye, you have to use a brand new North American white oak barrel every time. So a lot of like people that make yes. aged rum or tequila, they buy used bourbon Scotch and rye too. barrels. Scotch too. Yeah, Scotch. exactly where we're going next. So, so we, you can't reuse that for these products. You can make a whiskey with the used but barrel. But not bourbon or rye. But not a, thank you, Reagan, yes. Yeah. So what we'll do, Lutz, is... We'll take our bourbon barrels um, and we'll dump them and we'll refill them, for example, with white rum. Um, and in three years, a couple years, we'll have some true, authentic, dark aged rum. No artificial coloring or flavoring add added to it, which again, a lot of clients and consumers of alcohol and dark rum probably don't know that legally they are consuming some sort, some sort of food coloring and flavoring. So we are trying to do it the most authentic way, shape or form. So we'll take Blanco, agave yeah. and, and we'll toss it in our rye barrels and after so two you're months, just you're kind of constantly experimenting we're having fun man yeah, yeah. i mean that's well, what this and whole then business like, so like this yeah. these are all age spirits so like we've talked about you know gin is a whole different form of art because that's not being aged but you're getting the flavor from the different bot botanicals that yep. you're putting into the gin white, will probably be the next one the white we experiment with. So, i was going to say because you guys could ultimately hook gin. up with holly and brendan moral Right? Aren't they? They're doing a tequila thing. I just wondered if that ever crosses. Oh, they were know. with uh, George Strait's tequila, right? That's got them. Well, I, th I think he just sold, actually. Yeah. So they got a huge paycheck. You should give him a call. Mm -hmm. You should give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have him on the show. Yeah. Well, we're trying to get Brendan to come in here. I'm trying to get Brendan and Carbo on the same show. Oh, that'd be great. The father, father in law kind of thing would be cool. Yeah. So that'd be fun. Well, <clears throat> but there's just, as we were talking about, there's just so much art behind it. There's so, like, like gin, like, think of like, I don't know if you've ever, like, do you ever devil with gin at all? or Not no? a gin guy. Okay. G well, GT, but, gin and tonics when we were young. It tastes see, like a Christmas tree. I, I literally say it's, it tastes like sad Christmas. Yeah. So a gin and tonic. Sad Christmas. What gin and tonic to me, it's the tonic. I don't like tonic. So gin and tonic an tastes like sad Christmas to me. But I love, like, a gimlet. Like, a, you know, yeah. it's got, like, lime and, you know, if they had cucumber, basil. See, the vodka really gimlet refreshed. is where we always yeah. went. But, not the gin. so it makes yeah. such a difference, though, when you really start to dabble in, just like with whiskeys, trying different whiskeys and bourbon, rye, and the different profiles you get from each type the same goes for gin like i've tried you oh, know yeah. some that are really floral some are that are really piney like there's so many thing. different botanicals some, you know, with gin that you can work with dryness, like, to create some unique flavors and then you can age gin in like dane was saying yeah. in our barrels so there's just so many like paths that we want to go down eventually but right now, yes, our focus is... This is this. your lane for yeah. now. You want to... Yeah. Ultimately, you're going to own this road. Everything's going to be coming from that quality mentality. Yeah. So as we see it, we just know we're going to come up with cooler stuff. We'll make mistakes. We'll stumble on some other stuff that'll open some more avenues of creativity to, yeah. to really come to fruition. It's really about what we think we can develop at that quality. Well, I'll tell you, you guys, you guys, you transitioned into something incredible here, and and I can see where it comes from, because you were <laughs> that lot. you were that anally detailed guy, you know, when you had to be left alone to do your thing, and that's yeah. why I'm wondering how hard it is to kind of hand things off. But so we well, there has that doesn't play football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Lutz, there is no handoff. Hey, there isn't, Lutz. So we get the distillery up and running. Hey, okay. hey, hey, Lutz. We're Seriously. we're gonna have the distillery making the juice. We're gonna have tours. 
We're gonna have a little a bar and we'll have a nice stage for live music. Our whole goal is, and, and it has always been, you know, about family, about, you know, showing a good time, about quality. When people walk through the door of Belvoir Spirits, we want every one of them leaving there with that experience, you know, oh, that, yeah. That, yeah. that memory of yeah. having a great time. And, um, you know, that's what it's always been for us is, is building that home base. And um, we're right there. We're really close. I'm hoping a year from now we'll be having a launch party. Yeah. We're having this conversation that's the goal. in the distillery. Now. Well, yeah. but then that's part of your path, right? You've been, you probably, like I said, speed bumps. You ran into that yeah. in the past, and now you, you'll get to the point where you want to go. But I, I, <clears throat> I mean, you guys are incredibly versed in this whole thing. Um, I can see why they're, I don't know, do you call them partners? Are they partners or just yeah. family? Family. Well, we're, yeah. we're partners and we're family. Yeah. We're teammates. Yeah. I mean, we, we say team a lot. So I feel as long like as he doesn't call sports. me a pylon. <laughs> I feel like from the sports yeah. background, we all just well, that's say, for a defenseman. We say team a lot. It's like yeah. our team. Yeah, you guys are a good team, <laughs> yeah. and I see where it comes from. It's so. very symbiotic, Luds. Like we, like, like Dad said, we have areas that we're great in. We have areas that we're not so great in, and every teammate always kind of picks the other teammates' slack up. Yeah, that's that's the great part about having a team. Well, and I and I look at it like this now is your next Stanley Cup. Yeah, to win yeah. that Stanley Cup, but. That's kind of where I want to ask you a question. I asked this to Chelly, and I got a not an odd answer. I got I always I ask a couple other guys. So, Hall of Famer, Stanley Cup, gold medal. Uh, you know, we did win another championship together that you've already forgot about. Allen Americans, right? Yeah, <laughs> championship there. But yeah. my question is, for Canada you, Cup. Canada Cup. Yeah, there's nothing you haven't Zone done. Zone 4 championship. Vesnas. I mean, there's nothing you haven't won and not drafted. So that's where perseverance comes in for me. Between the Stanley Cup and the Hall of Fame, are they the same? Does one stand out more to you? Does it mean more to you? I, and I know the normal answer is no, they're both important. But doesn't one, does one lean, sum up your career one way or another or no? Well, I think... I have the same answer. They're both very, very important. But, you know, ever since I was four years old, <laughs> I dreamt of this. Okay. <laughs> you know, That's awesome, played, for the, played for that, you know, in the school gymnasium, out on street hockey, you know, floor hockey. You know, when we travel and, and stay in hotels, you know, we're playing around on our knees. Yeah. Played for the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Everything was game seven, you know, out on the street. And, you know, you're keeping score back and forth against your neighborhood kids and stuff and you know that was my dream you know ever since i started watching hockey when i was four or five years old the original six watched it with mom and dad and my sister every saturday night in in, in canada hockey night in canada that's what i think probably most canadians did we had maybe three tv stations to watch yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, that was my dream so winning the stanley cup was the ultimate for me um you know we we came close in in uh, chicago uh, in 02, it was a heartbreaker. 92. And, sorry, 92. Yeah. Uh, and that was a heartbreaker. Um, but I never gave up, never quit. And, you know, I had all kinds of... You can blame that on me. That was the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> right. all kind of, you know, the media is all over you. I, yeah. I was born in March of 92. <laughs> right you just before keep, the playoffs, Reagan. You keep working I just hard. couldn't hang on in there any longer. <laughs> Reagan, why? But, hey, it's a huge honor to be inducted. I didn't expect it. Yeah. Oh, come on. You know, I didn't. I didn't want I to. Think like, he I didn't even cross his mind. I didn't. Dude. Yeah, I didn't cross I, my mind. I know. Throughout my whole career. Yeah. So, like, were you one of those guys that were super surprised when you got that call? Huge surprise. Is that well, right? Because you got yeah. wasn't that like your first year of eligibility? Yeah. He technically but I didn't even didn't give it a thought. Retired. But wait, do they? Do they? Because I would never know this. Do they let you know that there's going to be a call, or do they just keep trying until you finally answer? Because you don't. And he never doesn't answer his phone. phone. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So how many times did they tell you how many times they I don't know how many times, but yeah, they said they had a hard time getting a hold of me. And, you know, it was a huge surprise. And, and we couldn't find them when we were honestly, teammates sometimes. I never followed it my, my whole career. I didn't, I didn't Neither watch does. it, didn't follow it. You never paid attention to, like, whatever the qualifications are that they call? Not, nothing. He had no <laughs> clue. He was total ostrich head in the sand. You know what? For me, what was so special... When I was a rookie, I was on the bench, I got, and I think Keenan did it on purpose. He called me up the night that they retired Glenn Hall, Bobby Hall, 
Stan Makita, and Tony Esposito's jerseys. Oh, wow. And they're at center ice, you know, all dressed up in their suits with their wives and just yeah. looked, you know, perfect out there. And the fans are going crazy and, and they're raising their their jerseys. That's what I wanted. I was on the bench crying. So this is this those is, were my heroes. Okay, cool, so man. that's where I was gonna end with is when I asked Chelly what was, you know, same kind of question I just asked you. He sidestepped both of them and said, I want to see my jersey in the stands or hanging in the building in, in Chicago. I believe that's what I, that's I'm awesome. sure he did. Yeah. And 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 his thing was is so that his kids could always see it. Yeah. That's a goal of yours, and the too. Fans. You would love, I mean. And the fans. Family yeah. and fans. Yeah. You but know, that's, it, go it's ahead and say it here. Meant We're so, worldwide watched here. Right? Yeah. You want to, we want the people in Chicago to hear you want your jersey in the bleachers. Yeah. Or up in the, hey, hanging from the rafters. Next, was it this Friday? Yeah, we're going to the game. Home, yeah, home I know. Home. I know. This, so this this will air next week, yeah. right? I can't make it because our team's in St. Louis, so I won't be there. But yeah. you'll be there with Shelly. Yeah. Right? And, and you and Al are playing on the other team. You're playing on, or at, which is actually your team. I get that. See, you guys are playing for Chicago against yeah. us. Against I think I'm them. playing, uh, Chelly and I are partners. I mean, how, uh, you know what I was gonna how do? fun is that going to be? What I was going to do, if, if I was able to make it, for the opening face-off, I was going to skate over and line up next to Chelly as my own partner. That's <laughs> what I was going to do. That would be cool. <clears throat> that would be good. The only problem is, you never play defense. You love to go. You play. You, the only time you actually start as a defenseman is for the faceoff. Then you're gone. Like some of the <laughs> Isn't guys that I the play new play game, though? Role, <laughs> it is the new game. Yeah. It is the new game. Right. Anyway. I, I fit in perfectly. You'll have oh a great, you'll you'll have like a great time. That was line. so funny. So last year when you guys did the alumni game, I was videoing everything, and then I showed Dad some of the video. He goes... That is that how slow we are? He goes, <laughs> yeah. he goes, I thought I was flying. Yeah, I know. We all think that, too. We, we yeah. leave there going, man, I felt good I go, about that. I don't worry, Dad. I'll put it on TikTok, and yeah. I'll zoom it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to say you can do that. It'll look like you're flying around. Yeah. Well, hey, so I do have to tell a story. I made, I made a career out of playing slow. So. I do have right, to tell right time a, a, you know, my feelings and, and, and a story about the Hall of Fame. So, you know, going to Toronto... I always love going to Toronto, that, that feeling of, yeah. of driving into the city. Um, you know, I was very lucky to play for the Maple Leafs. It was my mom's favorite team. And, and you know, we were all there together. And, and the excitement and, and the, the energy that goes into that city and the Maple Leafs is, is amazing. So the Hall of Fame being there and, you know, being inducted, um, you know, first overall I think there was only 20 some at the time that had been chosen first uh, eligibility. It started sinking in when we, when we got there and uh, you know, being around all the fans and, and all the, the, the former hall of famers and, and getting, you know, walked out to center ice at Maple Leaf in front of all the Maple Leaf fans and, 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 you know, shaking hands with, you know, legends, legends. And, uh, you know, then going through the whole weekend, I had my family and friends and, and everybody there, and we just had an unbelievable treatment, like just an amazing time. That's when it started sinking in. And then, you know, I had a speech all written out that I'd done like over the last month. You know, it was, I don't know how many pages long. It was, probably would have took me 25 minutes to- The song would be going off in yeah, the background, the Oscars, get off the stage, right? yeah. Thanking everybody that, that I, I loved and, and help me along my journey because you want that's your opportunity Absolutely. to thank everybody and you know that morning you, you're you're going over everything how the the night's going to go and they're like oh and by the way you have five minutes up there on stage <laughs> and i'm <laughs> like i can't fit all this into five minutes there's yeah. just I'm, through it yeah. <laughs> the whole script just went out the window <laughs> so but i mean just that's an amazing it time it was yeah. we, we they treat us first class they always have and uh I've been back to a couple of events since because they invite you out every once in a while. And sure. Reagan yep. and I are going here mm -hmm. to the upcoming uh, Hall of Fame event here November 11th. And um, well, we're not going to be at the actual induction because that's are on you Monday. Guys doing we're little, at the weekend. Are you doing yeah. a little party? No, no, no. So we're invited to it because they're doing a, a special edition of um, they're doing Hall a series of Famers. 
2000 to 2020. Yeah. Okay. Legends, 2020. Yeah, so, okay. so there was a you know a past one that we've all watched. You yeah. know, f our heroes. We got yeah. to watch them talk about their yeah. careers and stuff. So they interviewed me about a year ago, and it's I'm part of the series. So we got invited to come mm -hmm. watch the premiere of the series. So it's going to be the whole weekend. We're going to have fun together. But one of these events that Reagan and I went together. So we're in there with all some of my heroes and stuff, and we're looking around the room like, who's this, who's that? Oh, that's... Yeah. That was the, was it the 75th anniversary? Yeah, it was... Like, it was some dinner that they got, you know, a ton of people came back. It was fun to um, be part of, so... But that's where you met a uh, terrible Ted. Right, so Ted we're looking Lindsay. at, we're looking at these, there's a, a, a fella, an older fella, and, and two ladies, and on, on the shoulder of one of the ladies was a red wing tattoo, a huge one right on the shoulder. Uh -huh. I'm like, Riggs, look at that. So I'm trying to figure out who that is, and it, I kind of thought it was Ted, but didn't know for sure. But the whole day, you know, events happened, and we, you know, had a great time. Later that night, um, we got introduced to Ted and his two daughters. That's who it was, and we got to sit with Ted and his two daughters and reminisce for about two hours. Wow! And I shared a, a beer with Ted Lindsay, and mm -hmm. you know, thanked him. I said, That's Ted, awesome. thank you so much for your sacrifice. Uh -huh. You know, he pretty much gave up his career for all of us players creating the the Players Association. Right. And he got blackballed badly. Right, yeah. So that was uh, kind of a special moment. We got a nice picture with him. So. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, I ordered a beer and the beer was taking forever. And he's like, here, Ed, you can have some of mine. So I... <laughs> oh, really? Shared a beer they with Ted Lindsay. shared a beer. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it was just a... Was there any left? <laughs> of course there was. Oh yeah, of course. out of respect, of course. <laughs> but yeah, we we shared stories and just sitting there with Ted and um, I don't know how old he was. I think ninety three ish or somewhere around there. Yeah. And um, we were invited to to go to their golf. They have a charity golf event in Detroit uh, later that year. He passed away. Yeah, and it was so sad. Mm -hmm. but. Well, you're now the legend, Eddie. You're you're the living legend yet. And uh, I want to thank you guys for being here, especially as a family. Thanks for having I, us. I can. Yeah, I love you, brother. I, I, I see the dynamic of you guys, Dane, Reagan, yeah, Eddie, the Eagle, Belfour, Hall of Famer, Eagle, Eaglets, the Little Crows, <laughs> or whatever they're called. Thank you for this. It was awesome. And uh, hey, one last story. We got a lot of stuff to drink up. <laughs> one here. last story. We got. There's always a last story. Because one more. You know. We talk about blocking shots, and you know, I, we haven't I, talked about that at all. I, I was always saying, you know, to the fellas, "Hey guys, you know, th there's a time to block them, and there's a time not to." And well, I, used I got to, a follow-up story. I'm like, here. you guys, you guys, just sometimes you just got to get out of the way and yeah. let me see the puck. Well, you know, yourself, Maddie, Carbo, Keener. I mean, we had the best shot blockers in the league, so we learned about one another, and, uh -huh. and the timing was right, but. This is one of my most favorable memories of you. And uh, this is on the ice or off? It's on the ice. Okay, well, we had, we had a lot of yeah, off okay. ice memories. <laughs> but so Al McGinnis is winding up, and everybody, all the fours are like out of the way. And there's Luds, and he's standing between me and Al McGinnis, and Al's pushing the puck forward. <laughs> I'm like, Luds, get out of the way. <laughs> and you were just like stuck in the middle. And he just freaking wound, you know, full slapper, I don't know, 110 mile an hour slapper. And Luds does a kick save. And, he, <laughs> <laughs> and, I go up, and I'm like, I go, I go, and I'm like, grab Luds. And I'm like, dude, are you okay? And he gets up like nothing happened. And I'm like, where's the puck? And That's what happened. This oh, is what happened. That's what happened. Oh my the God. The puck went inside his glove. It was stuck inside the oh glove. I'm like, oh my God, your hand's gonna be in like 10 pieces. Oh, well, dude. and to follow up on that, after those days, we're gonna end on this, by the way. <laughs> there, there were late in the game, sometimes, you know, you get out there, he'd skate up to me. And it, if it was Al, it was Bork, it was a couple other guys. He'd skate up to me, he goes, Ludge, you take the bottom, I'll take the top. In other words, if they win the draw and it goes out there, Ludge, you just go down, go ahead, I'll take it, hit it in the head, whatever. And then that would allow him to stand up and probably see it is what you meant. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. reluctantly, I would. So right. anyway, I'd do anything for you, Eddie. Hey, but thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Teammate, my pleasure. That's yeah. a real And thanks teammate. to the boys, too, yeah, for, for all, all the block shots. Yeah. And, 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 of course, the Stanley Cup, Brad Hall. 
Freaking love you, man. That's your brother, dude. We never saw much of Holly, though, back at our end of the rink. No. He was always up there. He was doing his thing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. It, it was awesome. And, again, social media. Oh, yeah. Belfort Spirits. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, website. <laughs> Coming to a city and town near you. Yep. To See a tree you or out in the woods. QR you're code trying to win the jersey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've got oh, a, what do we got? Well, uh, Dad designed a custom jersey. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. So cool. that's been fun. Like, have Very you seen cool. it? Have you seen it? <laughs> what, didn't he bring it into the alumni room one time? No. Or pictures yeah. or something? Well, yeah, I've pictures. seen something. Yeah. Oh, so, I, no, I think this is like a year or two ago. Now we actually have that. a jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so we're going to. Well, cool. usually the host on this show usually gets something from the people that he does. So yeah. I could probably whiskey. wear that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Christmas Eve, we'll be drawing. For okay. those jerseys, and, okay. and there'll be lots of winners. Yeah, so, so we go to cool. events, and there's like a little way to enter, you know, to win right. a jersey. But um, yeah, so we've got a, a little bit of a Texas tour coming up. Dad's going, we're going down to Austin, San Antonio, Houston, doing some bottle signings down there. And then also um, the Houston Whiskey Social. It's like a big festival, and everyone's got booths, and people buy tickets and stuff. So we're going to be at that as well. So just events coming up. And, yep. then, and then we got the big North Dakota week. Yeah. It's coming up. So that'll be. Go Sue! Yeah. So yeah, there you yeah. Go. yeah, so we're excited That's for that. That's the way to end it. Go Sue. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, yeah. everybody, for tuning in. Suds with Bloods. See you next time.